And welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by A.G. Hines Company. If you got a do-it-yourself project on the docket, start the process at A.G. Hines Company, right downtown, a stone's throw from the World's Fair Park. These folks can answer your questions and then put the right tools in your hand and the right building materials in your truck or SUV or backseat of your car, however you want to do it. AGHines.com is where you can learn more. They've been around for more than 100 years. That's all you need to say about a place's quality. A.G. Hines Company. All right. Uh, welcome back. If everyone's technology is working, and we cross our fingers that it will be, we're about to be joined by John Wilkerson, voice of the baseball Vols, who was in Omaha and called last night's game. There he is. John, thanks for being with us today. I sure do appreciate it, John. Thank you very much, and happy Father's Day to everybody. Very good. Uh, just wanted to start. We talked a little bit in the uh, first segment about game one last night. Uh, kind of starts and ends with LSU starting pitching. But give me your quick takes on what you saw from the uh, – from the press box there. Well, Tennessee just really struggled to get something going against Paul Skeens. He worked nine innings in the victory in the regional against Tulane. Uh, I think he threw a season high of pitches in terms of north of 120. He has simply put a freak of nature. I mean, you're talking about 6'6". He's just a machine. After he had thrown 120 pitches, could still hit 100 miles an hour. Uh, recorded his 200th strikeout last night. If you want a comparison, Luke Hochaver holds the single-season record for Tennessee. His Roger Clemens award-winning season struck out 154 for the Volunteers. Wow. 200 strikeouts. Again, the man is just a beast. Uh, this is a team that's played uh, pretty darn well with his back against the wall here in the NCAA tournament. Uh, there's no reason to think that they won't be comfortable in this position uh, come Monday, is there? Well, and you can say the same about Stanford as well. Uh, Tennessee had its backs to the wall when the Volunteers had lost the first game in Hattiesburg, won the next two. So right now, 2-0 and with the season on the line. Stanford lost a game in the regional, came back to win. Lost a game in the super regional, came back to win. So the Cardinal just a tad more experienced. It's going to be a showdown for sure. And you're talking about that side of the bracket preseason. LSU was number one. Tennessee was number two. Wake Forest number three. It's Wake Forest and LSU in the game Monday night in the winner's bracket. Stanford was number six. So these are going to be two teams with uh, high expectations coming into this season. Both teams have been able to fight back with the season on the line. And the Cardinal going with uh, the nation's number two strikeout pitcher. So uh, he worked 158 pitches in getting the win to keep the season going in game two of the Super Regional against Texas. So he's 10-4 and four on the season, a senior, Quinn Marshall. We'll see whether or not Tennessee can get the bats going against him. If they can get to the Stanford bullpen, there's your chance because the team ERA is a little more than five and a half. It's the highest of any team in Omaha. Uh, I think we got a graphic here to put up for the folks. Yeah, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, ESPN, elimination game, Tennessee versus Stanford. John, you kind of went through the, uh, the preview there. What do you think Tony Vitello's message is to this team right now? What's he talking to them about? Uh, just remain calm. We've been in this situation before. What's he telling these guys? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you go back to it. You can look at what this team has managed to do when they were 5-10 and 10 coming back from Fayetteville, Arkansas, halfway through the SEC schedule. I mean, they've known that it's not necessarily a big-picture discussion. It's what's next, and they've done such a good job of handling that. I mean, they're the first Tennessee baseball team to, uh, to win their way to Omaha without getting a single postseason win in Knoxville. Um, you can take the 51 team out of consideration simply for that. They didn't have regionals then. But uh, this team has been uh, something special in the second half. So I don't think there's any question that there's not going to be panic. Uh, there's not going to be anything that Tennessee hasn't faced already this season. So I think it's just a matter of get ready. I think they're going to practice today, make sure that they've got everything that they want to and minding their P's and Q's and the matchup specifically against Stanford and the pitcher they're throwing. So I just think, Tennessee, do what you've done because it's gotten you this far. Uh, I, would be, uh, I would be pilloried if I didn't get the full Wilkersonian take on this. Uh, in terms of the teams you've covered, and you've covered a lot. I, I don't think you were there for the 51 team, but you've done quite a bit of broadcasting of all baseball since then. Um, is this the best three-year run that they've been? I mean, two World Series, by the numbers, two World Series, three straight Super Regionals. Okay, you look at the number, boom, there. In terms of what you've seen, in terms of the consistency of the program, is this the best three-year run that you've seen? It is. Uh, now, you could 
throw in a bit of an argument that uh, 94, 95, and 96, you went back-to-back -back SEC championships, and then you make it to the regional. That was actually part of a five-year run where you made it to regionals every year. But in terms of the best three-year run, without a doubt. Uh, Tennessee's never won three straight regionals at any stretch in its history. You make it made it to the Supers all three years, twice to the College World Series, fastest turnaround. Camden Sewell last night, not quite man on the moon, but becomes the first ball to compete for Tennessee in two different College World Series. I think that's pretty significant. So I do think this is the greatest three-year stretch in the history of Tennessee's program. And then last question, just for the people who couldn't make it, for the people who are here, what is the crowd like out there? I saw some videos yesterday of the team. I think you might have posted one of them. The team leaving the hotel with folks all around them. What's the atmosphere like? I mean, they've obviously, you went out to Rosenblatt Stadium, the old stadium, uh, and took a photo. Uh, but this is a much bigger uh, stadium, uh, seats more people. You've got crowds uh, from all these different schools there. What's a little, give me a little taste of the atmosphere for the Tennessee fans who aren't there. It's, it's a great atmosphere, uh, simply for the fact that it's, it's all love of the game. It's all about baseball. And so 25,010 was the attendance last night. And there was, of course, a great representation of purple and gold for LSU, but there was also a ton of orange and white. And when, of course, the team made its progression, not only was there the group, the Vol Walk, that kind of rose up when they left the hotel to get on the buses to go to Charles Schwab Field, but when they arrived, there was also a line of Tennessee fans that welcomed them and it kind of escorted them through the bus, from the bus to their entrance into the ballpark. So I do think uh, Tennessee fans have grown accustomed to this, and I think it's not just Omaha. I mean, there were great fans in Clemson. There were uh, as many fans as could get a ticket to Hattiesburg, went to Hattiesburg. That says so much in itself right there. <laughs> so wherever this team goes, there is a healthy representation of orange and white and certainly a great crowd on hand again here in Omaha. And again, if your season ends in Omaha, you've had a great season. Tennessee certainly, though, would love to get its first win since 2001 when they, uh, when they square off against Stanford on Monday. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your travels. Three great tourist destinations, Clemson, Hattiesburg, and Omaha. Uh, I know you really wanted to go to all three of those, though. So uh, congratulations on getting to Omaha. Uh, you know, go out there and pull them a win tomorrow. Uh, I know a lot of all fans here in Knox will be watching. Uh, I thank you for joining us, uh, getting up early and doing this. So thank you very much, John. Have a good call tomorrow against Stanford. John, sure to appreciate it. Always appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Uh, when we come back here on the Sports Source, the ball baseball team uh, not only made it to the College World Series this year, they've done something else they didn't do last year. We'll tell you what that is next on the Sports Source. Come on back. <laughs>